Hello students, it's Dr. Yu. We're now into part three of our data visualization series on designing tables and graphs. We looked at principles in part one, then we looked at textual visualization in part two. Now we're on to tables and graphs. And then in part four, we'll go into more detail on specific types of graphs. So let's get to it. The first things we're gonna learn in this section is we're going to learn how do I design tables effectively. I know a lot of you in the MBA program especially present a lot of tables. Now, should you always present a lot of tables is a, another question we can talk about another day. But if you do have to present tables, how do you design those more effectively? Secondly, we're also gonna look at what are the key parts to a graph. So if nothing else, you'll know what the key components are and what you need to be thinking about as you construct graphs. And as we, as we critique graphs as well, you'll be able to refer to those parts. And then also, what are the steps to creating a graph? Now, it's just gonna be an overview, a quick overview of what the steps are. And then in the next and final step of the series, we'll go into more specifics about particular graphs. Let's get to it. How do I design tables effectively? That's probably gonna be your first question. Now, you're probably used to seeing tables like this. Tables with lots of grid lines. There's not really any design to it and it's just really thick grid lines and all that stuff. Now, the first step to creating a table, if you wanna make this table look better, is number one, I highly recommend removing lines and borders. Why? Because if you notice in the previous slide, those lines are pretty harsh and they just add a lot of separation. They're like little boxes, employee four is very separate than office manager, which is very separate from experience. I think with just good spacing in between everything, you can tell that these go together on a line, these go together on a line, and so forth. So I highly recommend removing lines and borders and just adding spacing and everything will, will line up just, just fine. But secondly, you can always increase it a little bit more. So here, you just remove the lines and you can kind of see how the space is looked. But then when you add a little bit more spacing, you can pretty much keep your eyes focused on this particular row and know what it means. So that automatically gets rid of some busyness. One common theme here is we're kind of doing Marie Kondo, you know, does it spark joy, that kind of stuff, get rid of things that you don't need, tidying up with Marie Kondo, that show on Netflix, but now we're doing it with charts and graphs. The lines don't really add anything. If you have spaces here, the items can breathe more, you can still get have those guiding that your eyes can still be guided pretty well because you have so much space between each item and you just don't have that busyness there. But we're not done. We've increased the item spacing. Thirdly, we're gonna wanna align the items properly. Now notice here, we have text is aligned left. Numbers, especially multi-digit numbers, are aligned right. Now with two-digit numbers, you technically have options. Some people say you should still align them right I align these in center, so that's up to you. But whenever you have tables, you always left align text and you right align numbers, at least numbers bigger than three digits or bigger. But these two, this number here, like this can go right or center. So align your items properly. What you don't do is center text in a, in a table or anything like that. Next, you can add some design and color. Why? Because number one, it can help make some things more distinct from each other. But then number two, design and color are also gonna be your highlighting mechanisms when we're presenting in the context of explanation. So here, what we did was we just added some green to the top part, made these a little bit bold, and did add lines at the top and bottom because this is like gonna be the bottom line slash takeaway with the average down here. So we're gonna want those things to stand out. When you want things to blend in, you make it the same color, you make all the elements concordant. So concordant means they're all the same. When you want certain things to stand out, you contrast them. You make certain things so different from each other that they're gonna be noticed. So here, we're creating some contrast between particular elements. But next, we're gonna to wanna to label our table and add some sources. So this is mid-level manager salaries. You'll be amazed how often people forget to label their table, so I don't know what exactly this is or what the tying theme is to this table. Now, this is not the thesis of the table, this is just a title to the table, and you have to know the difference between those two things. But also, you're gonna have a source. Where do you get your numbers from? A lot of times I see students present numbers, and I'm like, where'd you get those numbers from? And so you wanna make sure you have a source so we know where it came from. Now, 
if you're the CFO, obviously the source is going to come from company records and all that. But if you're presenting tables from an outside source, then you got to make sure you can cite where this comes from. And notice that the source is just at the bottom. It doesn't take away from the table at all. But if you're just curious how I got these numbers, this is how I got them. But then sixthly, you want to highlight your point. In the context of presentation and in the context of explanation where you are making an argument for something, you're going to want to highlight what it is you want me to notice. As an, as an audience member, as somebody looking at this table, what is the thing right away that you want me to see and you want me to take away from this table? So when I look at this table and I see mid-level manager salaries, I'm going to be drawn here very quickly because of how it's highlighted, how it stands out from the rest. So automatically, I'm going to be looking at the average here because that's what you put the highlight. So therefore, if you're presenting about mid-level manager salaries and your argument is something about the average, like the average is high or the average is low or just whatever, this is the average and whatever, whatever you want to argue about the average, great, then you've set it up properly. But let's say your argument is something else. Your argument is perhaps that the office manager is underpaid, perhaps. Maybe you're saying, look, the office manager only makes 80K Whereas uh, an assistant marketing director makes 89 and a lead designer makes 81. Hey, a lead designer makes more than the office manager. What's going on? Okay, so in any case, highlighting this is going to make me look here. And then this pre-attentive attribute. So you might, hear, you might see this in the readings and such, pre-attentive attributes. Before I even start making sense of the data, my eyes are already pre-attentively going to look here because you highlighted it. So as I'm presenting about why the office manager salary is insane or too low or too high or whatever, you have set it up so I will look here first and then you are supporting yourself with that point and you're directing the audience's attention. You're keeping the audience's attention singular by looking at that point. But you're still not done. So depending on if you want to talk about the average or if you're talking about a specific salary or both. So let's say you're giving a presentation and you want to start off by just highlighting the average. Okay, then highlight the average and then do your slide that way. Then go to your next slide. Now I want to highlight the office manager. Notice how an office manager, this is blah, 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 blah. So you just do different slides that highlight different things and then you have kept the audience's attention single. But we're not done still yet. One more thing we got to do. And that is we need to write what our point is. I highly recommend doing the thesis data approach to data visualization. Write your thesis in one sentence, very, very precise sentence. Doesn't even have to be like a fully grammatical sentence. It can be in telegraphic writing and put it at the top. So if the audience starts at the top, they'll see your thesis right away. Average mid-level manager pay is below 100K. And I can look down here and I can look down here and see that point very quickly. If you just threw us a table and you didn't have this thesis and you didn't have this average highlighted, I would just start, my eyes would just start wandering all over the table and I'm starting to try to make sense of the numbers and what the point is, I'm not listening to you. But when you first show this slide and you say, the average mid-level manager pay is below 100K, and as you see down here what's highlighted, blah, 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 you have set yourself up to be able to guide the audience through the table so you tell them exactly what they need to take away, and it's very visually apparent that they will follow that as well. And now you are leading the audience from point A to point B without them falling off because they got all lost in all this data and, and columns and rows, and they don't know what to do because you didn't put what to do. So here's how it might look on an actual slide without all my guide points. So I would just have the thesis at the top, whatever I'm trying to highlight in the bottom, make sure you still have a slide title so I know what this is in case there's no context. And then if you are citing outside data, make sure you have a source so I know where the numbers came from. And there you go. That's how you do a table. Now, you can make these tables even more fancy. So I would, this is kind of low level still, even for me, like I would still want to maybe add a background and then maybe do some things, but at least the core concepts of what you need to be trying to accomplish when you show a table, this is what it needs to look like at the very minimum. Using space, minimizing lines, getting rid of things that you don't need, highlighting the point, putting the point at the top and making things clear. So I can get the point very quickly. PowerPoint is Glance Media. Data visualization on PowerPoint is Glance Media. So if you compare the two, I think one looks a lot better than the other. One tells me what I need to take away. It's spacious. It's not busy. It's lined up properly. I can read it quickly. 
I like the bottom one. How about you? So there are three ways to visualize data. We've talked about text so far, and we're talking about tables right now. And we'll talk next. We're going to start talking about graphs. So what are the key parts to a graph? Well, the three parts are first, you're going to have a background. The background is just the background of the graph. You got to make sure that wherever your points and data points are, that this background is going to be something that will work with your data, not contrast badly with it. So that's an important part. This is where the data points are going to be laid out and we have to make sure we can see it. But sometimes you have a theme to your PowerPoint, like you have a color theme or an object theme or something like that. And so you're going to want the background to jive with the theme. So you'll want to pick a background strategically that fits within the color scheme and such, but still doesn't also make it hard to read data points. So that's the first part is the background. Then you have the actual data itself, the bars, the, the lines, the dots, whatever. And so those are going to be uh, imposed on the background. And then your last part is the emphasis. What are you trying to emphasize? What is the point that you want us to notice? What is the point or thing you want me to see right away? The emphasis is going to be contrasted from the other parts of the graph. The emphasis is going to stand out to me. So when I first look at the graph, I'm going to see the emphasis right away. This is what most people forget when they do data visualization. They say, ah, oh, I got my background and my, my bars. I'm done. No, no, no. You need an emphasis, bro. You need an emphasis. Okay. So this is one thing you got to make sure you have when you're visualizing data and the PowerPoints and all the other presentations that you give in my class. Now, when you're choosing a background, the big thing is you want to make sure you pick a good contrasting background. So this little chart here kind of tells you what's a good, like when, in terms of foreground, like of what kind of font you're using and background, which ones contrast well and which ones don't. I have seen PowerPoints where people do like yellow and green and it's really hard to read, or they do like, you know, black and gray and it's really hard to read those kinds of things. So make sure your, your foreground and your backgrounds really contrast with each other. That's why I think white or black is usually good because there's clear ways to contrast with white and there are clear ways to contrast with black. When you try to do the middle colors, sometimes people make bad calls as to what's really visible on a projector screen. You also have to remember that a projector screen is composed of light most of the times, unless you're using a smart board and light makes things lighter. So really think about that as well. Some of the things that don't look bright on a, on a computer screen will look brighter on a projector screen because of the light transmission that occurs. Next, there are four graphic ways to present numbers in a graph. And so all graphs come down to these four methods. Either you're using dots like a scatter plot or a strip plot. You're using bars, like a bar graph. You're using lines, like a line graph. Or the fourth option, and you learn this in stats, a box and whisker plot. So you're using boxes. These are the four ways we graphically represent numbers in almost all graphs and data visualization. And each of these have different mileage and different rhetorical uses. And so that's where, when we talk about the seven types of numerical relationships, you're going to have to decide what is most appropriate for what it is that you're, for what point you're trying to make with the data. Now let's do a little exercise real fast here. Tell me how many threes are in this and go. One, two, three. Okay. There's four threes in this little slide, but it took you a while. You had to look through that thing and you had to try to find all the threes. And I even put you on a timer and I didn't tell you that I was. And you were like, where are all the threes? I had to like look through. But if you look at this, how many threes there are? Four, right? You see them right away. They contrast. This is the notion of pre-attentive attributes. When we look at your graph, we want to be able to see the point right away. This is where things like emphasis help. And emphasis comes through contrast. When you have good contrast and a good contrasting point and thesis and pointer, that's what you want. Now, what are the steps to creating a graph? This is going to be the thousand foot overview. And in the last bit of the, in the last segment of this video lecture series, we'll go into very specific detail of each graph. So what are the steps? First, you're going to consider the context. 
explanatory or exploratory. Then you're going to pick an appropriate display. Now we're going to talk about types of numerical relationships in the, in the next section. Then you're going to eliminate clutter. You're going to go all Marie Kondo. It's KonMari method on the graph. Then you're going to focus the attention. You're going to tell us, this is what I want you to look at first. This is where those pre-attentive attributes come into play. And you're going to highlight things and you're going to tell us, this is where I want you to look. And then you're going to tell the story by putting the thesis at the top. This is the takeaway of the graph at the top. If you don't understand this graph at all, it's totally fine. You see the point at the top. Now we can move on to the next slide. So those are the five steps to creating a graph. In the next video, we're going to apply these steps to the seven types of numerical relationships. So how do I design tables effectively? I gave you a, a series of steps. Eliminate unnecessary components, add some design, add a thesis, highlight things. What are the key parts to a graph? You have the background, the data, and the emphasis. And what are the steps to creating a graph? We went through the five steps. Consider the context. Uh, pick an appropriate display. Eliminate clutter. Focus the attention and tell the story. I'll see you in part four, where we will then go into detail of each type of graph. See you then.